Welcome to Lizzie's Workshop and this week's version of Mixed Media Monday. So I am continuing to work in my jelly printed journal and I'm continuing to add these uh, washi tape to put them together to, and then create cohesive pages on the other side. But I'm um, going to show you at the very end of this video why I need to kind of change how I do that. Um, but that can wait till the end. So I like this jelly printed page and I sort of wanted to keep it but then I ended up kind of just going where the wind blew me and it uh, I ended up losing all of the print in the background except for the purple hexagons which I guess that is okay. So I started off with just taking some matte medium and covering it all up with this ripped up tissue paper. This has been my favorite tissue paper that I have purchased so far and so I'm getting towards the end of the stash that I had and I wanted to put this in my journal as part of a um, kind of a um, remembrance kind of thing. So I covered this whole page up with it thinking okay well I'm gonna just use that as the whole background and then we'll go from there. But I didn't I didn't really have a plan of where this page was going. This was one of those days where I was hoping that the use of creativity would beget more creativity because I just knew that I needed to use my time down in my craft room and um, just kind of went where the wind blew me, so to speak. I'm, I'm finding though that the pages that I plan out I end up enjoying a lot more at the end than the pages that I kind of go by the seat of my pants. The ones that where I go by the seat of my pants, it's not often that I end up absolutely loving and adoring them at the end of the project. So um, I'm thinking maybe I need to continue to think about things and lose a little bit more sleep. Because <laughs> that's what ends up happening to me as I I get so involved in my creativity that I forget to sleep or I lay there in bed thinking of a certain project and then I get lost. So once this was dry I did use the heat gun on it and that's maybe why I'm having trouble with the washi tape on the other side is because I am using the heat gun. Um, once that is nice and dry I went through with a Neo Color 2 crayon and it was a pinkish red probably crimson. I put it away already so I'm not sure which one it was. Um, so I went through with the one color uh, crimson first and then after that I go through with another color and I just kind of randomly spread it all over the page in order to create um, a whole color or a, um, a base color because I've got so many different things going on on the page I wanted to bring it all together with one background color so I go through with the crayon again and I put another layer on to darken it up and then I will dry that out and uh, that's where it's going to be left so underneath this tissue paper you can see a little bit of the jelly printing but because I'm at, I've added the pink in there the red circles that were in there below before are now disappearing into the background. So once, every once in a while when my page gets too wet um, instead of drying it for extended periods of time or bubbling up the uh, mediums that I've got on there what I will do is I'll take my little pipette, plastic reusable or disposable pipette depending on how you decide to use them and I will just pick up the pockets of wet paint and spatter them all over the page and that kind of just adds a little bit more visual texture to the page. So this green paint is the Prima chalkboard paint and I think it's called I think it's called golden Oh, gold olive, golden olive or something like that. I just had a little sample container of it and I've been using it for about two years and it's finally dried out. So I had to apply it with a spatula and then I spread the rest of it on another piece of paper and now I am done with that sample and I have no more of my favorite green. So I'm gonna have to uh, find some more I think. So I set that tag aside to let dry and it wasn't really drying all that well so I did hit it with the, the heat gun and when I did that the paint was so thick that it bubbled up right away which I decided that I liked and so I continued to heat it with my heat gun until it had a nice uh, texture all over the entire tag. Then I'm coming back to the main page and I've ripped up some wrapping paper and this wrapping paper has kind of the texture of a birch tree 
And I ripped that all up and I'm putting it in a diagonally across the page. And what I was thinking here was that it was kind of like a rocky outcropping. And then I would add a plant or, or something to this, some sort of flowers to this page after the fact, something on top. So I get this on there and I had to rip up a little bit more just to fill up the whole space. And then I um, forgot to go in to highlight the bits and pieces and edges so that it looked like a rocky outcropping. So it kind of just sits there in the background as another visual texture and kind of breaks away from from the um, pink of the background. So once that is all done, I make sure that I cover it with a nice thick layer of the matte medium. And I'm covering the rest of the page with matte medium as well because it is a watercolor crayon and I didn't want the uh, paint to move anymore. So that once that is nice and dry, well, I guess I add one more piece, but once that is nice and dry, then I can move on to the next step. So here it's nice and dry and I've pulled out this Donna Downey stencil and I'm going to put some um, Liquitex uh, modeling paste through it. So I put that in there and at this point I'm not even thinking about where the page break is. I don't want to, I want this to be a nice cohesive page and I want it to look like I cut it apart and it was all together at some point. So that's exactly how I did it. I just pretended that there was no page break here. And that's why I use the washi tape on the back is so that I can make spreads rather than individual pages. So once that is done, I did pull this stencil up and move it to another page in the book and I used up the rest of the modeling paste on that other page. So then I go and I grab some elements here. This is a doily probably from the dollar store and another piece of that wrapping paper that looks like birch bark and I'm using some black gesso just a little bit of it and I wanted to dirty up that dirty up that doily a little bit I wanted it to be a little bit more black and scrubby and give it some texture but it didn't quite go the way I wanted it to but it worked out in the end because I don't really show off the whole I don't show off the whole doily, I just use bits and pieces of it to add a little bit more to the base of the writing that I'm going to put in there. So I, I dirtied up this piece as well so that it would stand away from the rest of it. And then I decided I needed a border. And then I, you know, I've, I've been really thinking about this and when I'm looking in my art journal, I'm noticing that I've been putting a lot of borders on things and I'm wondering where that's coming from because in, in past pages I'm not sure that I have been I have been too so focused on having borders so I'm gonna to have to go back through my art journals and see if borders is something that I do on a regular basis just for a point of interest so now that I've got this I went through and I used my oh I think it's a little it's called a brother um, labeler label maker and I have the pink with white text for the label maker ribbon and so I added this quote in there. I'm not sure who the quote is from um, but it says if you don't like where you are then move you are not a tree. I thought that's pretty funny and I've been trying to convince my husband that we need to move to a new house because I'm sick and tired of this one and I feel like I could purge the house better if I moved locations <laughs> Growing up, we always moved quite frequently, so we al always were able to purge our belongings in the process of moving. And so maybe that's why I feel a little bit overwhelmed, is because I'm trying to to do a stationary purge, um, or you know, purging right where I am and not going anywhere. So I feel like if if only we just moved, then I could do a proper purge of all of my spaces. So then I grabbed my golden heavy gel and I used that as the glue. You can see the texture on that tag from using the heat gun to bubble the paint a little bit. And I didn't want to put a knot in the ribbon and so I just kind of put it through the top of the tag and then placed it there with the um, golden gel, heavy gel. And then it all just kind of glues nicely together. 
Once everything was dry, I went through and I trimmed up the edges of the pages. And this is where I'm showing you the problem. As I'm pulling off this washi tape, um, it is pulling up the layers of paper from the page underneath. Now, I don't think I'd have a problem if I didn't use my heat gun. So, as long as you're not using the wet, wet mediums that go through and make it adhere more closely to the page, and as long as you're not using your heat gun, everything is fine and it comes apart nicely and smoothly. But um, I'm going to have to make sure that from now on I just use the washi tape, you know, put on my first layer and then take the washi tape off right away so that I don't continue to rip and destroy the, pa the pages that I've already created. Because that's a little bit sad when you create a page that you absolutely love, like this purple one underneath there, and then I ended up having to damage it by removing the washi tape. When it's a page I haven't started yet, when I, like this one, I haven't created anything on the page yet, I wasn't so disappointed when it got damaged because I'll just put another layer over top later on and it's no big deal. So then I'm going to go through and punch the holes that I want and then I am set to go on to the next page for next time. The close-ups are about to come and you can see all the layers of texture on this page. If you don't like where you are, then move. You are not a tree. Thanks for watching on Lizzie's Workshop and I hope you join me again next week for another episode of Mixed Media Monday.